Drinking whiskey when that whiskey's burned through my veins. Indian goes crazy and the Scotsman wants to bash out the brain. Of an Englishman, don't know why. Got a little mixed up in the hills of Carolina. You see, you got your selling and you got your drinking whiskey. Oh, yeah. Drinking whiskey. Oh, Welcome back to Lady Babylon Satanic Initiation. We're almost done here with the season. Isn't that amazing? Thanks for sticking around for so long. I appreciate your time and I respect it. So I'd like to get right to things tonight with a couple of comments just to get some feedback here. Can you flash those up there, Chewy? Um, actually, you know what? Let me just tell you what we're going to do in general tonight. Um, we are sorry. I didn't mean to jump right on like that. You can't do that to people, right? Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get in that time ship and we're gonna go back right to the moment of the crucifixion. I mean, we're gonna be time stoppers. We're gonna stop it right at that moment so that you can see the expression on his face, so that you can see him. 100%. I want you close enough to smell them so that you can tell me, as investigators, you can tell me, I think this is what's going on. Tonight, we've got a mystery. Yeah, we're detectives tonight, people. And tonight, we're going to find out what happened. Who killed Jesus tonight on Lady Babylon? And let's go. Let's go forward. We've got a little bit of uh, tonight for your viewing pleasure. I want you to be able to see a little bit of a deposition that took place. And I'm going to warm us up tonight with that deposition. I'm just going to play it again. But I want you to think of yourself. Think of yourself in the top floor of a downtown Minneapolis building full of legal offices and people taking depositions and going here and there looking at it. You can see the whole city from up there, right? Um, and that's where we are. That's where we are. And we are with a group of attorneys who are attempting to um, draw out, draw out a, uh, well, you be the judge. You be the judge. What is it they're trying to draw out? Seven hours of questioning. Hit it, Chewy. I've seen in some of the documents, Mr. Hellman, that there is reference to what is called a muse. Correct. And sometimes it seems in reading some of the documents, it's hard to know whether you're the one who is actually speaking or providing information, or whether the information is coming from a muse. Is that fair? Let me... I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Tell me about... Do you have a muse? Yes. What is your muse? Or who is your muse? The muse is a divinity that inspires poets. She's the voice of inspiration. In antiquity, she was worshipped. Does the muse have a name? There are several of them, yeah. What are they? Cleo is the muse of history. So as I was a graduate student, I considered myself her student. Medea is a Roman muse. She was the first, and I consider myself a student of her poetry. How do they affect what you say and what you do? The muses use poetry to inspire. So as a teacher, I consider it my duty and obligation to serve that process of inspiration, po poetic inspiration. Do you hear the muse from time to time? Not audibly. I read poetry, so I hear her speak through the poems. 
And do you hear either of your muses in your mind from time to time? I don't hear anything in my mind that I don't read from a text as an academic. No, I don't hear any voices in my head. How is it that the muse guides you from day to day? Well, the muse is, uh, the purpose of the muse was to reveal beauty. And so the servant of the muse is bound to perpetuate that teaching. And you're bound? Yes. To that? I would say so, yes. So you're bound to the muses then, right? Correct. And just to? Ah, uh, well, you know, I would say that I'm bound to serve it, everything that those divinities stood for in antiquity. If you say I'm bound to serve Bacchus, I would have to say sure. What's Bacchus? It's a who, not a what. Oh snap, you didn't know? Bacchus was the son of Simile, and he became, for the Greeks and some of the Eastern cultures, he became the god of the vine, the god of ecstasy. Uh, divine or vine? Vine, like grapevine. He was the god of wine. He was the god of ecstasy. So he is portrayed, oftentimes, working in concert with the muses to teach and to inspire. Yes, I have to say I am bound to serve him. And um, when you use the word bound, what does that mean? It's my duty. Okay, and do you adhere to that duty? Is there more than one duty? Your first question. I try to keep an ideal, yes. In your conceptualization of this, is there more than one duty? I think personally, the Greeks and Romans established religious ideals. It's every human being's duty to aspire to, because they reflect things like beauty and nature. <sighs> Mr. Hellman, you have some tattoos on both sides of your head. Can you tell me what they represent? Sure. Would you mind addressing me as Dr. Hillman? And I'll bring you more later. It gets to a crescendo. And you wonder, you remember while you're watching this, these little clips, that this is a transcript of an actual event. So um, it's very interesting to watch to see what people... You know, um, you could put 1339 on it and people would not know the difference. Yeah, fantastic. You didn't think it was relevant, but back then when it, when it was attacking education, before it attacked the government, it attacked us first, right? We had mobs and book burnings before everybody else. They just warmed up, right? Yeah, you cannot. Remember, the goddess Justice is the last to leave. She's the last to leave. You have one hope. Keep justice or lose your democracy. Keep justice. Nobody is above her. Nobody is above her. Fantastic. Let's go. Jump right in. I want us to, uh, I had a couple of comments there for people to, Maybe just go ahead and run one of those, one or two of those comments, Chewy. Let's just let people see what's going on. A masterpiece. Oh, this was my publicist must have picked this up. Um, and how many children will be spared this horror because you have the courage to tell the truth? You have a beautiful heart. Thank you, doctor. Much respect and appreciation. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd, for taking your time to watch. Yeah. And, you know, who knows? Maybe it's our... Maybe it's our duty. Maybe it's our duty to bring this reality, right? It's help may help out a lot of people, molested and raped, or, you know, mentally raped and molested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so we're there you know what i mean satanic mission is a humanitarian mission definitely definitely let's um let's get in the comment see what's up yes look at this help me out here what is the alternate explanation that defends the church give for uh what went on during all of these initiations and ceremonies now uh, this is absolutely wild i'm having a hard time imagining what defensive narrative they would author would offer yeah remember that that was great comment yeah um remember that we are in a time where uh, mystery religions are performing rites that are involving sex and drugs. And there's a lot of people getting busted for a lot of stuff, right? Not the drugs, right? Romans don't care about the drugs. The Romans don't care about the drugs. Why am I talking about this? Because our spaceship has reached the time that we need it to reach. And here we are, first century, right? Here we are. Oh, God, love this. All right, what's the context here? We got piracy, boys. Piracy. We're going to have to take out, take out more of the pirates, right? We've done this before. Um, we can do it again. So I want us to start. I want us to start in one place. One place. Remember, these are international dealers and souls, right? So um, we have to be careful with these people. It's the first century. Caesar himself got abducted by a group of these people. Yeah, right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Speaking of mail, um, I just want, I, I want to go to this. Uh, well, we'll look at it in a minute. I've got an anonymous student who sent in a little bit about the pirates that I thought, hey, this is perfect. Let's start with some uh, Greek, though, tonight. Where are we? Dramon de tiskaikimisa spongon oxus. So this guy gets up, right? Everybody out of the time ship. Let's go. Here we are. This guy gets up, right? And he runs over and he fills up this sponge. He fills up this sponge. What's he fill it up with? Oxos. Oxos. Now, you and I, take it down for a minute. You and I have already learned we already have this within our investigation somebody's got the files that in the geoponica we're told explicitly that the oxos is the common name for the viper venom yeah antidote and when i say antidote i don't mean they just somebody gets bitten and you get whoop antidote right better no i'm talking about the anti-pharmacon what is that? I'm giving you something that wizards get. So um, here we go. You witches out there. You real ones. I know you're out there. I get email from you. Anyway, <laughs> that's what we have. We have this anti pharmacon to balance. It's by these visionaries and these prophets, man. Remember the guys that are sneaking into Jude? Right? And they're like sitting in your service and looking at you. Hey, right? Those are the visionaries, baby. Those are the ones that enter the dreams and pull out those visions. They're those apocalyptic. We're talking. Where are we talking? Ah, John, John the what? What do we call that guy? John, come here. The hairy guy dressed all up in skins look at this he's eating the honey he's got his he's got his bugs yeah and what else is john carrying around john you have to sh shut up just stand there john just stand there just ladies and gentlemen this is john the baptist in case you haven't figured that out you didn't get a proper introduction john keep your no keep that on keep that on there's a reason so um, John, tell me something. What do you, what do you got underneath your, you got a bulge there. You got a bulge there. What you got? Well, I know you're one of the Bapti. I know you're one of the Bapti. Who are the Bapti? Well, okay. Just a second, guys. Kids, close your eyes, right? I'm going to search John. I'm going to search him. I'm going to search. No, I didn't plant that there. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Does everybody see it? It's a Wetrea Priapea. You say, what? 
It's a glass priapus. And some of you, some of you get it? Oh, yeah, one of those. I used to know of a store that you could go and get those. But all the windows were like, had stuff on them. You couldn't see into it, right? And it had some kind of prohibitory sign on the front of it. Had to be of a certain age, maybe, or something. I don't know. But it had these. They were there. These glass priapea. Yeah. The glass priapus. John the Baptist carries a glass priapus. Now, how would I translate that most clinically? Most clinically. Let me just give it to you clinically. Let me give it to you clinically. Are you ready? The proper terminology would be medicated dildo. That would be the only way to politely, YouTuberly translate to hermeneuticize. We're following Hermes tonight, right? All of you who are on the throne, you can see it, right? Hermes. People are saying, why is Hermes important? And people from that clip, people from that clip are saying, why is he saying Medea is the Roman, is the Roman muse? Yeah. Ever hear of Carmenta? Guess who put her there? Guess who put the oracle in Italy, you boneheads? Yeah. All the accomplishments of these great, of this great queen. None of it. Just go to Topos. Search tags for Medea and start looking at the stuff that she, just the engineering stuff, just the engineering stuff, right? It's amazing. We don't have any any care for it on this side. Well, it's it's leaching, it's leaching into. They're right. They're mystery right, everyone. They're Bronze Age Saturnian or Satanic mystery right is being taken over by this guy from Nazareth that people keep calling the king. The king. Yeah, love it. And that's what got us here. That's what got us here. As we got off the ship, did you guys notice? They had arrested Jesus. He'd already run out of the garden with a naked kid. He's got his hands in there. I'm not a child trafficker. Child trafficker. Yeah, okay. So now they've put him on the cross. They've put him on the cross, and we're watching him. Jesus, this is a special, this is a special occasion. For those of you who've been, been here from the beginning, you'll, I think you'll understand this, but tonight we have a special witness. We have the deceased himself, right? We have the deceased himself, Jesus. I want you to speak to me, Jesus. I want you to tell me, what was it? What was it in your head when they pinned you to the pole after they found you with that naked kid? What is it? I know it's unpleasant. I know it's unpleasant, but we have to do it, right? It's what, you know, Department of Transdimensional Justice, right? It's, uh, it's the way the universe works out, right? If you don't like it, um, you're welcome to complain. Fantastic. Um, people uh, want to look more at the pirates. Let's go to some Greek. Let's pull out some Greek. What's going on in peoples? Yeah, go ahead. Bring that one up. Did we finish that one? Yeah. Oh, no. So he takes out the, takes out the sponge with the oxus in it. We know what that is, right? And he does what he puts it on a reed and he gives him to drink of it and he says now watch this Afite, idumen, e ergete helias kath elen, auton. yeah okay Afite. hey watch this guys let's watch and see if elijah is usually how alias is translated right Helios, hmm. yeah, Helios. Um, let's watch and see what happens. 
Wait, what? What did that soldier say? They wait. All, all I got was they some dudes that were there cracking some kind of joke or seeing if he will. Well, well, what are they doing? Well, he's been in and out. He's been saying things and screaming about being thirsty. Yeah, and he's been saying stuff. So he said something that tipped us off. And what was that thing that he said? Let's go there. Let's go there. Look, everybody back in the ship. We're going back by two minutes. Okay, go ahead. Get us there, Chewy. Light speed. Nope, next one. There we go. And uh, this is what Jesus is doing at the time. What was that? Son of God, would you please speak up for me? And Jesus let out this great voice and breathed out his breath for the last. He ex pneumaticized. Yeah, he took out his breath. This is the way people have a saying, to die in antiquity, right? The breath is the life. What? That pneuma, you don't have your pneuma anymore, you don't have life. That's the way it is. Yeah, love it. Lovely imagery they've got. No? But he, he breathed out his life. Okay, so there he is, people. He's dead. He's dead on the cross. There's a problem. He's early. Nobody else is dead. The two people that he's hanging between, those people aren't dead. Why? Because this is not how you die from crucifixion. You die from crucifixion by suffocating. Yeah. So when it came time, when it came time, we've got some problems with the guards. They're telling us Jesus died prematurely. It's now at this point when he breathes out that last air. Okay, two minutes ago, what did he just say? That these, these people were making a joke about him hallucinating. I want to see. What was he saying? Take us back. No, one more. There we go. Yeah. And in the ninth hour, he shouted, Eboison. You know what this is not? This is not the behavior of somebody who's dying from loss of blood. It's not. He shouted out, Jesus, in this great voice. He's got, the guy's got some pipes on him, right? And he's, he's bellowing out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthane. And people say, what is this? This must be Aramaic. This must be Hebrew. This must be the sacred language of the angels. Um, if you would stop just for a second, those of you who are my students, go ahead and put it back up at you. See the um, words that you get here. I want you just to tell you in the Eloi, Eloi, that lambda is oftentimes a representative of a digamma. Right? You'll get it. The people up the stream, they couldn't pronounce it the same way. So what do we have here? We have Ewi. We have the shout that is given to Bacchus. And what do we have in Sabachthane? We've got two gods. We've got Saba and we've got Saba in his Thonian version, written large. Do you know what this is? This is the shout of a Bacchant who is performing the mystery. Take it down. What is crazy is that he got himself killed while performing the mystery itself. He was supposed to enter into death and then come out in resurrection, but his boy got clipped and he ended up dazed on a cross screaming out Bacchic imprecations to the God. And they go on in that verse. It goes on in that verse and talks about, yeah, what we interpret this to mean. Why? Because it wasn't a language. It was a magical expression from the Wox Magikai, right? The Wokes Magikai, excuse me. 
The voice says, plural. The magic voices. Good. All right. Do you see how we're are we getting us? Okay, we've got him. We've got him screaming. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty, right? We've got him. Long story short, he gets poked in the side, right? Because the soldiers come out. Why do they come out? To break people's legs. And why, why are they breaking people's legs? Go ahead and bring up the next Greek. Yeah, so the soldiers come out, right? They came out. And what happened? They broke. They smashed the legs of the first guy. Right, like they're using some kind of hammer, right? And and then what they do? Well, they smash the legs of the other guy, the ones that were crucified with him. Okay, so you've got to see this is all because people didn't want the view for the holiday that was coming up to be a bunch of dudes on crosses. Who wants that when grandma comes with all of her presents? I don't, right? So what did they do? They took, they took down Jesus, <laughs> right? That's what the text tells us. And how are they going to take him down? Well, he's got to be dead, right? Just finish the execution. You know how the Romans finish a crucifixion? Jesus, hold your ears. This might be painful. I'm not talking... Mel Gibson painful, right? I'm not talking three hours of the most delightful, gruesome, sadistic stuff that I've ever seen invented. I mean, this the, Mel Gibson and the Marquis de Sade are right in the same place. Those guys, those guys would get along. You know what I mean? Same level. You and me, Mel. You and me. Yeah. Desaad, it's amazing. So um, let's get back to the actual crucifixion. Jesus, close your ears. So they get to the to Jesus, and of course, as we just saw, he's already dead. He's already dead. And that's when one of the guys yells out, "Yeah, he was the Son of God." Do you know why? You can follow the fairy tale, and you will. Oh, behold, the Son of God. <laughs> right? That's the fairy tale. The other side is the sons of God, like the Baptist, right? were a group of people associated with a drug and sex ritual. Fantastic. Sons of God. You know what they did? Yeah, yeah, they got together with the ladies, the ladies, like Mary Magdalene. Did you guys know the sons of God? They didn't know the sons of God. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. They were with Mary and her crew, right? Jesus is always hanging around with what group? He's not hanging around with the wealthy He's not hanging around with the um, business people. No, he's hanging around with the prostitutes and the accountants. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so within those circles, he's able to do the right. So much so that he gets himself caught. So imagine this. You are being crucified while you are under the influence of drugs. Drugs that are balanced with a sexual act between you and a child. You have freaked out because they have found you and you have your hands raised up and you say, I am not a child trafficker. And you know what they do? They get a mob up that's pissed and they crucify three child traffickers together. Do you know what the text tells us? It tells us, tells us on, let's show it. Show the, show the people, because don't take my word for it, right? Tote, stout on tie. They were crucified with him. Duo lestai. Oh, look, there's our word. There's our word. 
Where are they hanging? On his right hand, on his left. Or on his right hand and on the one that we don't say bad things about, right? Because we all know it's the sinister one, but you know, that's how they said left. Isn't that funny? Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, take it down. Those, there's your lace tie, right? And watch what happens, people. This is why it's important what we do. Because we work, right now we have a museum going. Watch what one of my students said. Put up, put up that email. Don't say, who, don't say who this is by, but put it up. Put it up. I don't think he'd care, but there you go. Good day, Alan. I was just reading Diodorus when I came upon this in book five. Malista de ton hapan ton ontes filoguna. Isn't that a nice word? Filoguna. That's the word to love. Get that down. That's the word to love and the word for woman together in the same word. Look at that. The Greeks have a word for woman lover. Woman lover. Yeah. Are you one of those women lovers? Well, apparently this tribe that he's talking about have so much love for their women. Like they love their women more than anybody does. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because when their women get captured by pirates, they'll trade four men for one of their own females back. That's how much they love women. They will trade four. Do you know why this tribe did that? Because they understood the resource. It's that simple. They understood the resource in her voice. These are the people that are starting. They're developing those rights that you and I are studying. It's coming from a feminine voice. Yeah, love it, love it. Did you know there's a feminine savior um, 1,200 years before the masculine savior that took over? and monopolized the system? Did you know it was started by a, a woman? Yeah. Does that surprise you? Yeah. Does it surprise you that she could get all the way over into Italy? We call her the Rome. All the way from the Black Sea. You should see the engineering projects that she worked on. Fantastic. Fantastic. So here we are. We've been breaking the knees, right? Breaking those legs of those people so that and the Roman soldier notes. Okay. Dude is dead already. Dude is dead. Pokes him in the side. Out comes a whole bunch of water. This guy was drinking a ton of water, right? Because whatever he was on, dips ass, then it was making him crazy, crazy thirsty, right? Who knows how many venoms that guy had in his body? Who knows how much he had? But did you see the rapid death that set in? The rapid death, the prophet. Remember, what is Jesus doing right before he gets put on the cross? What's he doing? They got him made up like a king, bro. They got a purple robe on him. They got a crown of thorns, right? They have an acanthic crown on his head. For those of you who have been in the right, you'll know why. Yeah, and they've got a purple robe on him. And they're smacking him, telling him, hey, which one of us is going to hit you? Right? Boom. Who was that? Which one of us was that? Right? They're playing a game. Why? Because he's a prophet. He's a prophet. He's a prophet. And when he was arrested with that naked boy, first thing out of his mouth is, I'm not, a, I'm not one of the kid traders. All right. Let's bring up the next. We're almost um, at the end. I want to see that one. Yeah. Oh, can we go back to that letter? Take a look at this, too, people. Take a look. Um, um, though I didn't need convincing, he says. He says, uh, I was also curious about the abduction of Cora and looked to see how Harpage and Harpazo, excuse me, were translated in the English Bible, right? It was watered down to robbery or plundering, even though it's described as rape 
everywhere else. Enjoy your day. Thanks. Great, great input, right? So you see how somebody can step forward, and they did from the last time that we met, and said, that boy who is with him, who is not a boy, he's a full-grown naked man, <laughs> wrapped in bandage, <laughs> just on his goomnos, though. <laughs> Yeah, those people said, look, he's just saying, I had a lot of indignation. For those of you evangelicals who wrote back, thank you for writing back. Please keep it up. I enjoy it. And I think it's a good forum. But when you write back to me and you say, it's, it means robber. I know right away that you don't do Greek, number one. And that's what this student was showing you, right? This student just came along and said, hey, there's... Look, I found another context here where it talks about abduction. It's not, it's rape. The history of the world starts through Herodotus with abduction, rape. You can call it child trafficking, taking a young girl off to be the bride of some king. It all starts with four of them. One of them is Medea. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And Jesus runs out. I'm not a pirate. I'm not one of these. You know why? Because he knew what those Roman soldiers can do. Right? Wow. Gonna walk up with his sledgehammer and turn your legs into pulp so you suffocate. We'd be done with this and everybody can be home. Look, we got another son of God up there. Right, and Jesus is freaking out, saying, "Ah, ah." and you can follow the fairy tale and say, "It was at this moment, kiddies, that the sins of the world were being placed upon him." And he's saying, "Why did you turn against me? Right? Why did you turn against me? Can you imagine? Last words out of your mouth is you're going through a right is screaming at the power that is." That who is and was and will always be and saying, why have you turned? Yeah, saying some stuff that's out of a magic incantation that Bacchants use while they are high, high, high. Yeah. It was that cup of John's, baby. It was that cup of John. That's what started the whole thing. That's what allowed him to have that Holy Spirit, right? And you too. You too, my bride. Who's getting ready to nymph? You know who I'm talking to, the church. You know his bride. You, you know you're his bride, right? You're that girl. You're that girl that's getting abducted. That's you. Yeah, and you know what? Medea sends a golden crown and it's going to consume bride, groom, and father. You guys have a great one. Thank you for coming tonight. Hail Satan. Drinking whiskey.